That is hands down the worst coffee I've ever drank in my entire life. Oh, that is that is not that coffee. Is, Those no. Wrong. All right, everyone. Welcome to Hiking and Biking, the show about well, hiking and biking, mountain biking specifically, because roadies are not real bikers, as everyone knows. Uh, my name is Jacob, also known as Netrift on this channel, and this is Caleb. So uh, today we're going to be. This is the first episode of this. We're, we don't know how it's going to go, um, but. I mean, if if it's two things I love, it's mountain biking and hiking. So I thought, why, why not make a quick, a quick, a, a quick, cute why show? Why not make a quick, why not make a cute show? <laughs> okay. All right. So the main topic of today's show is coffee on the trails while hiking. Now, if it's one thing the mountain bikers are, it's coffee snobs. They're they're also beer snobs, but that's that's not what we're talking about today. They are coffee snobs, and <clears throat> it's hard to backpack and also be a coffee snob. So we're gonna look at a couple different things today. Well, not a couple. We have four different things. So let's check it out. Um, the first one is one that I tried to use on our last backpacking excursion, but didn't get to. It's uh, this is called Kuju Coffee, and it's an instant like all-in-one pour-over solution. So you, it's got like metal things, and it holds it over the mug, and you just pour water on it. So I haven't tried it yet, but we're going to today. Uh, so that one, and we're we're also going to talk about their portability and their overall taste because. You know, backpacking is striking a fine balance between what you want to carry and what you don't want to not have. You know what I mean? Um, another. Another option is just bringing pre-ground coffee. So this is uh, Jumpin' Goats. This is a local a roaster. Roastery. A local roastery. roastery. A roastery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a local roastery. Uh, they do really good coffee. And the reason I'm doing this one, so I have some pre-ground Jumpin' Goats. And I have <clears throat> some whole bean Jumpin' Goats, which we will grind right here. And just, you know, because it, you can bring a grinder, but we're going to say, is it worth bringing the grinder? And, Caleb, would you like to show number four? I haven't seen this yet, so. Yes. Yeah. So, number four <laughs> is uh, I, I acquired this from from a friend. uh uh-huh at work yeah. and he says man i'm addicted to this stuff and uh um, that does not bode well <laughs> for me <laughs> no it does not uh considering you can't actually read what is that? anything on it unless you speak uh either korean or japanese what? i can't tell what is this um <laughs> the the only thing that is uh what any form of English is uh, in the bottom left of the packet. It, the it says three in one, and that's it. Uh, it has a picture on the front of two people walking uh, <laughs> away a, from a helicopter, a, I believe. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so it's got a businessman in a briefcase, a businesswoman <laughs> in a purse. Uh, I guess they're business people. It's got like a cappuccino and just the helicopter. It's like just a news helicopter. And uh, there it is. Yeah, right there. This. The, <laughs> <laughs> what? He 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 got this from a um an Asian market okay. uh, near where we work, and oh. apparently he got it sold to him uh-huh. uh in a ginormous bag uh-huh. of them just thrown in there. So, yes. How do you, how do you make it? You pour it in a water bottle. Or oh, water. Okay, so it's like an instant coffee kind of. It, yeah, it's it is. Okay. Yeah. It also does say the number one coffee at the top left. So that's that's some more English. Hey, that's some more there English. you go. Uh, but yeah, he said it tastes great, and um, yeah, this is uh this is probably one of the easiest forms oh, of uh, making okay. coffee. Yeah, so it's instant uh, coffee on the trail. <laughs> okay. So there we are. We have our whole beans. Um, well, here let me put the whole tools here. So whole bean, you're gonna need a grinder. Um. Here's the handle for it. The beans themselves. Uh, pour over. Now, for this, you're going to need some sort of French press or pour over mechanism. I have one, but I forgot to grab it, and I don't feel like getting out from behind this table. So, But <laughs> it's about the size of this, so just know you're going to have to carry basically this with these two right here. They're actually going to... I guess these are about the same uh, easiness. So, Carrying all this in the backpack, or just carrying this... So. We're going to go from hardest to make to easiest to make. Does that sound like a fair way to do it? Mm-hmm. Well, let's freaking go. Start grinding. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Start grinding. So would you consider yourself a coffee snob, Jacob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, I would. <laughs> so, you know, again, coffee is something that can really make you, especially out if you're out and it's cold and rainy on the trail, it'll just really make you feel that much more at home. And it's it's very important to... <laughs> So in my apartment for a while, we didn't have like a, we had this this burr grinder, <clears throat> um, 
but it was so annoying to just crank the thing with your hand. Uh, so I attached this drill to it, and we used this as our primary coffee grinder for <laughs> what, like two years. <laughs> and it makes some dang good coffee too. It yeah, it, it that combined with the French press itself is is quite good. True. Uh, we're not using a French press though. We're doing pour over. Uh, we're gonna keep it all pretty much the same. Sounds like someone peeing. It does. Sounds like a urinal. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, if that <laughs> if that doesn't make you want some coffee, I don't know what will. So this coffee, um, is good coffee. I would drink this at home because this is how I prepare it at home. I mean, you know, you might do a French press or whatever, but I don't know. I'm gonna give it taste. I'm gonna give it ten out of ten taste, just because this is like pretty much peak. Like I can't get the coffee much better than that. You know what I mean? Like you're you're burr grinding it. You're gonna do it fresh. Um, portability. I'm gonna give it like a one star. <laughs> one star? Well, I don't know. I out feel of, like well, I feel like one star would have to be you're literally taking the coffee pot like, <laughs> like and the heat and everything. You're taking, like, all you're taking yeah everything with you. Well, let's think about it. So. We're gonna t the the mechanism is about this big, okay? So a little small, maybe a little smaller than that. It's like a canteen. It's somewhere over there. I'd go grab. I don't know where it is. Um, little packets of sugar. So like a fistful of sugar packets and creamer, probably for the whole trip. Maybe it's a weekend. This, um, your grinder. You know, it's actually not that bad. I mean, but how much is it? It's pretty heavy. Like that's pretty stout. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like if you can pack it, you can probably pack it, um, like put the burr grinder, like for example, oh, you if you take this, you can take it apart, put the burr grinder in the cup. Well, see, that doesn't work though, because the way the cup is for the, like the French press I have, it has like layers on it. So well, I mean, like half of, you can't really put that in there. You'd have to have it separate. We did it now without the pr French press. Well, yeah, but we have this. <laughs> we, do we need this? You need something to make coffee with. No, I, I know that. I mean, can we take this part? just the filter here and then like set it inside of a cup you know what i'm saying yeah you'd have to have a cone or something what if you had like a plastic funnel of some form i mean that's pretty much what that is but at that point well this is glass it's, it's just weight. well you can do you can have plastic pour overs mm -hmm. they make those oh okay okay but that's that's another thing you've got to carry so now you're carrying all of this True. That, that's, that's a lot, lot of space. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's weight or so what mm -hmm. it is weight actually, but it's space for sure. These two take up the most weight. It's just, you know, because and that's in the way. Because these, I don't know. It's they're they're things that cannot be packed together, and I think that's the big issue here. Um, so here, here's what I'll say. This is a very portable setup. So like, if it's a weekend, and say I have like you know all this room, I'm gonna take it. You know what I mean? Like I'd give it. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 for portability. What do you think? I think if you bring the French press, it's a 3 out of 10, in my opinion. But if you bring this, like a plastic one, then it could be a 4 out of 10. Now, okay, that French press also is the cup. Oh, that's right. This okay. is representing the French press. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because okay, it's that yeah, red thing. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's where a 4 out of 10. Then. Where is that thing? <laughs> Just go grab it. What, the French press? Yeah. I don't know where it is. I think it's upstairs. I uh, know. I think it's actually right there. Where? Yeah, it's over there by the skateboards. Like behind the yellow bag. Anyway. <laughs> um, and here's a third thing. Because as we start to look into these, how much like trash and environmental footprint do they have? Because with the French press itself... You know, the pour overs you got to bring filters, mm -hmm. with, but the thing about these filters they're biodegradable. You can just throw them in the ground and they'll they'll fertilize the soil. With a French press, you just rinse it out. There's a lot of water though that you have to use to to clean that French press, so that's going to be a lot of resources you got to take into account. Um, but actually, the French press itself is probably close to an I'd say a seven to I'd say an eight for like waste and environmental aspect there. That's, that's good. Don't you think? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you think an eight out of ten for that? Mm -hmm. I mean, plus I mean, if you f if you decide to make camp near a stream or something, uh, water is oh, yeah. not an issue either. Um, so location, location, location. I guess. Right, and you know you should always be cognizant of the environment. But even if you're not, just think whatever you whatever trash you bring in, you're gonna have to bring out. So you know if you're having to like these, the ones we're gonna go into, not not this one, but the next one, um, is going to be. 
um, well, you can have trash, right? So, uh, yeah. So I think that's good for that one. You want to go ahead and move on to the next one now? Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So what what is it? Let's tally off that score there. It's what ten for taste. Uh, four for portability and eight for environment. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's gonna give it a seventy-three. Mm-hmm. So it's got a it's that that g- we give that a C overall. Uh, but again, you can't really look at that. You can't really look at just that C and make a decision. You've got to look at them individually because certain things might be more important to certain people. Because mm-hmm. if you you want the here's the thing, if you want the absolute best coffee taste on the trail, then this is like you have to bring this right. I mean, you just yeah. have to. I mean, this is the best one for All sure. Right. But, you know, if that's not the most important to you, then don't bring it. So let's chug this down and get to the next one. Let's get it. Definitely a different taste. Yeah. It's a... It seems an odd way to describe it, but it's more boring. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not more bland. (laughs) Embrace your inner coffee snob. It hasn't had as much personality. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's it. This (laughs) coffee... That's <laughs> it's more of an introverted coffee, you know. It, it doesn't it hang out that much. It just watches yep. uh, reruns on Netflix. It doesn't even branch outside of his own shows. It's seen uh, The Office about thirty times. Through. It's definitely got a more flat taste mm. to it, for sure. Um, and you know, if no, I'm not gonna go there. Never mind. Does that coffee prefer Friends or The Office? This one. Mm. This one's definitely a Friends person. You think so? Oh yeah. I see. I was thinking it's more basic, so it probably likes The Office. Mm, I feel like Friends is more basic than The Office is. Really? Mm-hmm. Personally, I because my prefer... sister likes friends. Oh, all right, and all right, like all right. That's fair. So um, <laughs> I did. I did get the balance of sugar and cream better in this one, though. So that is making it better for me. Same for this one. This one still. Don't get me wrong. Th- this coffee is oh, just yeah. really good. It's still good. Uh, but one thing, actually, I think the biggest thing that I noticed personally is this one. After you being like being tasted with the burr grinder, is just the. Uh, this one is just more smooth. Like absolutely, it blends absolutely. and like grabs the the fl- like the flavor. I feel like grabs onto the, um, the other elements uh, mm-hmm. that were combined in the coffee itself, and it just it just all just blends so well, and it's very uh, it rolls. It, I, I want to say it rolls off the tongue, but it rolls on. It rolls. Tongue, it rolls yeah. down the throat. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And if if you guys out there have never tried coffee from a burr grinder, you're missing out. Like, it, it really, you don't think it makes that much of a difference, but it does. Like, every bit of bitterness and roughness of the coffee just goes away, and it's, like like you said, it's smooth. It's great. Yeah. I was introduced uh, to a burr grinder. Uh, but yours truly. Dude. Yours truly. So, Turn yeah. In, yeah, you gotta convert yep. into more it coffee. Was, it was pretty dang good. Um, okay, then, so, taste out of ten. Uh, I mean, I'll still give it, since it, I mean, the coffee is just good in general, so yeah, I'm still gonna give it good. probably, like, an eight. Um, but I, because I was also the, thinking it, yeah, it's yeah. it's not it's not quite as uh, honestly the smoothness is what makes it the ten <sighs> true. Um, so yeah, but but yeah, like an eight ish. Um, because this is the exact same roast. Yeah. Um. So you know that's and that's why I put these on here to have a more very very fair as fair of a comparison as I could. Um. Okay. So on to portability. I'm gonna give it a six out of ten because, um. The two, you know, this right here is the heaviest bit of that kit, of the whole thing. You know, because it's made of metal. It's got all these, it's got ceramic stones. That's what burrs are. They're ceramic. So, you know, and you've got to carry this handle or the drill, but you're not going to carry, you're not going to carry the freaking drill. So, <laughs> you're going to have to be doing that. Um, actually, if it's a weekend hike and I had that much room, I would bring the drill. <laughs> But this is this is not this is probably like two pounds, and that's gonna that's gonna add up. This is probably pound and probably a, a pound at least. It's probably close to a pound. Yeah. Um. And it's, if you're a weight weenie, that that would absolutely murder your pack. Um. And you know that the longer the hike, the more this is really gonna bog you down. Um. So, I don't know. I'm gonna give it a six. What do you think? You think that's fair? Yeah, I can agree with the six. Because okay. I mean, it, just taking off that one pound. Well. I don't know, maybe maybe five and a half, but in in just to keep it at yeah, whole yeah, numbers, we're, we're not doing half scales. Yeah, to keep to keep <laughs> it at, to keep it at whole numbers, actually, I might give it a five. Well, see, five would be average for me. I'm thinking five is average. So, what's average portability? I'd say that's about like with just this. Okay. Well, no, because in that case, I would give I'd still give it a four, um, and then I would knock down that first one, um, personally, but. Saying that we gave a four per or before, um, 
I, I'll still, I, yeah, I'm gonna still go with a five. Okay. See, I'm thinking on this scale, like a whole, like a Keurig is a one. Yeah. So going up from that, it's got to be at yeah. least one point better. At least one point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, well all right. We'll give it a five. We'll give it a five. Because okay. I mean, you're only taking off the one item. If you were able well, to, it's two because it's the handle. Ah, uh, okay. Because well, yeah. you got that. I mean, you can rubber band this together, but still, you can't put these in anything. I mean, you can. You can put them like an... Oh, if you have a shoe, you can slip it in a shoe. All right, yep. it's a five. Mm-hmm. So it's a five. A five for portability, eight for taste, and environmental impact, Um, literally the exact same. So what did we give that one? It was an eight, right? Yes. So this one comes out with a flat 70. Uh, so a C, very low C, very, barely passing. Uh, one point lower. Um, But I'll be straight with you, that one pound for me is worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, if just personally, so that's what I would go with. So we're still we're these. not for that one. We won't. Wait, is it already? Oh, is that a cappuccino? It's got three and one. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's okay. not just coffee, oh, buddy. Oh no! Now we're on to the Kuju coffee. Now I'll be straight up to disclose my bias with this one. I'm really looking forward to this one because look at the form factor for this. This is the coffee, the pour over, and everything. All you need for this is just literally any cup. So the camp cup that you'd have anyway or your pot, like just a normal cup. And water, I presume. Well, yeah, but you're going to have water in your stove anyway. So all the stuff we just talked about for that other one, the the grinder, you know, all of that is right here. Look how small this is. It's so flat. It's perfect. How oh. yours. So you pour this. Oh, this you rip this open. Okay. Okay, so it just sits. Look at that, dude. All right, that's pretty nice. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. That's amazing. Look at that. That's pretty cool, actually. Firecracker. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait. Ah! You have more of those paper towels over there? I dropped it in. Did, what the... <laughs> Shoot, it's turning over. No! Oh, no! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's hot. Uh, So, this one's going to be... um, We're going to put this over The most full-bodied in that it has just straight coffee grounds in it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. It smells good. What roast is this? Is it a light roast? Or, I think it's a dark roast. It smells like a dark roast. It's a medium roast. Yep. So oak, <laughs> chocolate, and honey. So I definitely smelled the chocolate. That was, I don't know if you smelled that when it was brewing. I did not. I was, uh, I was actually very intrigued by the, uh, the, the concept of this, uh. Super, super cool. Yeah. So here is the inside of this. You can just see the coffee crown swirling around. Oh, it. gosh. Yeah, so this is going to be nasty, but that was my fault. I can't believe I ruined this one. This is the one you were most excited about? Yes. You know, I think I'm going to trust your judgment on this one, Jacob. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I'll be honest, it's going to be hard for me to give an honest opinion on this taste. Um, I'm going to give it... As coffees go, I'm just going to give it a straight five. That's With those coffee grounds, it's a one, but it's it was not as good as I expected it to be. It's kind of bitter, um, but for what it is, uh, it's certainly better than instant like that. You know, like just, well, I don't know if we haven't tried that, but the like, little Folgers packs. Um, so I'm going to give it a five for taste. Portability, uh, I'm giving that one a ten. Because, yeah, that's, that because for easy. what you're getting, it's amazing. I mean, you're getting basically a pour over in a pack. Um, although I did screw it up. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. Get that. There you go. Um, 
Now, by the looks of that, that actually looks biodegradable. So I guess you could bur bury that. I'm not sure, though. Um, but you are left with a little bit of trash. So this one, though, so if you can bury that and that is biodegradable, um, then that's actually, for portability's sake, or for like environmental sake, I'm going to give that a solid 7. Um, but if that's not portable, I'm going to bring it right down to a 5. Um, so yeah, that what does that score give us? 15. Uh, that gives us a 22 and a 20, actually, which is, again, on par with uh, the other two. So again, the scores at the end don't go by those. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I'd probably take that again, honestly, just because of how compact it is. Actually, you know what? I'm going to bump that up. If it's biodegradable... Um, Dude, you're, you're left with this and this. You're left and with just the bag. Yeah, that's... What, oh, so you're saying this is biodegradable too? Well, that's the same material. Okay, yeah, that's true. Let's see. Ethically sourced, nitro flushed for freshness. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's also made with wind power? Mm -hmm. Wow, okay, you know what? Environmentally friendly score, if it's biodegradable, is like a solid, like... Nine. Nine. Yeah. That's yeah, really we're going to bump good. that up to a nine, actually. While it wow. is not currently 100% compostable, we are working closely with our supply chain, and we are aiming to have 100% compostable um, pocket pour-overs by 2020. So they're working on it. That's awesome. So That's, a solid, that's a solid nine. Okay, still. so when that happens, well, when that happens, that's going to be a nine. Actually, you know what? When that happens, It'll I'm... It'll be a ten. I'm yeah. going to make it a 10. I'm going to mm -hmm. make it a straight 10. Yeah. So when that happens, um, that's going to put that score to a um, total, an 87 out of 100. So that's our best scoring one so far. However, currently, since that's not biodegradable and you've got to pack every bit of it out, you know what? I'm going to give it a 6 since it was made by wood wind, with wind energy. That's what I'm going to give it. So um, that brings the total score to a... Uh, so it's, it's still a 73. That's what we're giving it. So, that is not bad. That's not bad at all. Mm -mm. That's like slip it in your side pocket mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's pretty good That's overall. That's really good. I, oh, you, yeah, for sure. That for is, sure. that is, yeah, I like that. So, all right, but I'm still, again, until that is fully compostable, uh, I'm still sticking with my, you know, I'm going to give it a 75. We're going to bump it up to 75. That's We're going to give it a 75. Give it 75. So. <sighs> now it's on to this one. So, this one is going to be a little bit different. <laughs> this one by far is the most compact, right? Because not only you don't need to bring cream and sugar with this one. You don't need cream and sugar. You don't need, you don't need anything, anything but water and so, that packet. I gave that one a ten because of how clever it was packaged, but this one is a ten just out of sheer size. Mm -hmm. This is instant coffee, so you just mix it in with the water. Yep. Mm. It is it. You are Oh god. Give it a whiff. Give it a whiff. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, my gosh. Ew. <laughs> what is that? It doesn't even smell like coffee. <laughs> Describe that smell. Um. So it's got, like, some maple <sighs> notes. It, okay. So it's like. A hint of feces. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I've seen it after note. it's been made, and it will look like feces water. Oh, no. Yeah, it looks like poopy water. Uh, anyways. It looks so, like the puppy chow seasoning, like on the that stuff. Oh, it kind of does. Yeah. But, no, the smell to me oh. is like, imagine a ramen packet yeah. mixed with, um, like, a bunch of cream and sugar. So, like, you're trying to get, oh, and uh, you know what? A faint coffee smell. <sighs> yeah. And, and by faint, I I really do mean faint. Um, but yeah, it's 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 almost salty. The smell is, which is odd. Oh, it smells <sighs> like oh god. Oh, it smells like Chex Mix. Why does it smell like? No, <laughs> this it's is awful. It's actually got a slight skunk like oh. smell to it. Holy crap! No wonder you're supposed to make it in a water bottle. You don't smell it. Ugh. Oh, you don't smell it until you can see okay. it. Okay. 
I didn't actually expect this one to be this bad. I was, it's bad. I, was, I, was, I didn't it, know it was bad. I was like, oh, this is not going to be that bad. You know, it's probably not going to be the best. Oh, but, no. No, dude, no, no, no. This is nasty. No. <laughs> we got to drink it. Oh. We got to try it. Dude, this is really bad. I know. Dude, my, dude uh, it's, it smells uh, like... Uh, <laughs> It smells like all the bad parts of Chex Mix, <laughs> does it not? Like all the nasty parts that no one wants to eat just kind of crumbled into water. Yes. Oh yeah, get yeah, get some of that in there. So, uh, yeah, this this, this looks gross. like baby poop. It, it uh, actually does. That's, it smells a little bit like baby poop. It's like the stuff that comes out of those baby alive dolls. Yeah. <laughs> gross, dude. Um. Yeah, it's like congealed at the bottom of the cup here, and uh doesn't matter if I'm mixing it or not. It, mm. It's it's still there. All right, so. time to bite the bullet. You ready? No. I'm not either. I am, I am oh, not ready this is in nasty, the slightest. Dude. Come on, let's go. This is dis- – I'm not – I'm sipping this and nothing else. True. I, I don't even know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. All right, we got to do it. Do it for the show. <laughs> that is rancid. Oh my! God. It has a hint of corn flavor. Yep. I d- Why does it taste like corn? <laughs> it's Ooh. bitter. Bitter corn water. So imagine a Dorito uh, that's been soaking in ramen. Actually, mm-hmm. yeah, I would say ramen. Um, imagine that. And then somebody oh, tried to market it as coffee. Dude, that was... Bad. That is... It's like yeah, snot. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. That's... It's like actual... like. Okay. <laughs> that is hands down the worst coffee I've ever drank in my entire life. Hol- that is That is not <laughs> coffee. That Don't, is, no. That's, that's a, not coffee. All right, so taste, that's a, that is a one. No, that is a zero. I can't give it, it lower than a one. I can give it a I zero. <laughs> I'm giving it. A, I'm giving it a negative okay. seven. Okay. Negative seven is what it gets. All right. Well, it's getting a we're zero. We're subtracting we're points subtracting from the points. other categories because of the taste. So while we're cleansing our palates, that actually helps. Oh yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. So taste is a zero. Absolutely. Even though one is the lowest number. Doesn't matter. Portability is a ten. Yep. Environmentally friendly. So, here's the thing about the environment here. This one's going to be complicated because there's no way that was made sustainably. <laughs> no. No. How many, like, how much biofuel was made? How much, all of it. How much biodiesel was Literally used all that? of it. So, we've got half the, half the Midwest just kind of melted into one of these bags. I'm going to give it a seven. For uh, environmentally friendly? Yeah, because... You know, no, I'm giving it a six. I'm giving, you know what? I'm, I'm giving, giving it a five. A, I was going to say a straight five because it's just the same as normal instant coffee. I mean, it's nice that you don't have to bring, you know, your powdered creamers or whatever, but but those are typically in paper bags. The sugar in the raw is in paper, so that burnt, you can use that as tender in your fire. Yep. So that'll go away. Mm-hmm. That is just all plastic. I don't know. I can't give it more than a five. It's just average, average yeah. for instant coffee. I mean, and it's the, the same thing I think thing the as... Folgers one is actually paper. Oh, that's good. I didn't know that, actually. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. For me, I thought it was a, a tin-like substance. Um, like metal-ish. It might be. Um, or foil. Foily. Like a foil. Yeah. yeah. For ultralight packers, don't take that. Just take no. just take the Folgers and drink it black. Because if you're an ultralight packer, then this you're... This is fine. I would take this over that any day. And drink it black? Yep. Yeah, I would too. Because I, li- I don't even like black coffee. Well, I like black coffee. I can drink it black. But if you're an ultralight backpacker, then you're not going to care. Like, your your main concern is weight and, and like, you know, packability and stuff. So if you can do away with the sugar and whatnot, then just take your Folgers Instant. But honestly, I think the best bang for your buck is that right there. That's nice. Um, I know you didn't get to taste it, and it's if that's not, I'll be honest, that is not the best coffee I've ever had, but it is miles better than that one. Um, yeah. So what do we give it? Uh, five, a uh, fifteen. So that's a solid fifty. It gets a fifty. So that one fails. The guy at my work who gave me these, yeah, he actually <laughs> drinks one of these every day. No, he doesn't. I'm not joking. Dude, that is not how. I don't know. I thought that it was gonna just be like Mediocre. kind of a yeah, mm-hmm. a, like a. 
crappy coffee. That's what I was expecting. But no, that was ten times worse. I was not ready for how bad that was. No. Uh, as soon as we opened the pack, honestly, is when it started. It was just, mm-hmm. it was from the get-go bad. And the longer that it stays, like, it, the smell right now is still, mm. is still, yeah, it's it's lingering. See, I've... I'm telling you, because I've had that instant Folgers stuff. It's like, you know, 30 cents a bag. And it's mm-hmm. I would take that every day black over that. And that stuff Absolutely. is, you know, as a coffee snob, that's like, hey, that's terrible. But, you know, it's not that bad. For what it is and for the portability, it's great. I take Folgers every day. If I'm going for a weekend and I'm glamping, I'm taking this. I'm going for a weekend I'm not glamping, I'm taking this. If I'm going for, like, a long hike, I'm taking the Folgers and drinking it black. And here's the thing that I do, too. I like to take tea as well because mm-hmm. I like to have some tea. Uh, and for me, tea, I don't like. I mean, I'll put like honey in it, but I don't have to have it. So I'll just have the tea, and that's really very portable because that, that you know you can do whatever that. So see, I take I take spark packs. Well, there you go with me because I mean it's it's technically cleaner for your body than um, certain co- instant coffees. Well, yeah, um, it's not cleaner than oh, this for sure. Um, but in general, uh, spark is is great for me mm-hmm. to it's it's I mean which to explain what spark is and shortly it's just it's an amino acid supplement by Advocare. Um, and it works very similar to co- – it has this, a very similar effect uh, that coffee does. So that was our main topic for the day. All right, so the next segment is the video segment. So for each episode, we're going to take a video for both hiking and biking. Uh, you know, these can be from wherever you have one you want to send in. Please do. Uh, this one actually comes from a guy – so I thought it <laughs> – right, we're doing the hiking video first. Caleb hasn't seen any of these. We're just going to play a, um, a quick clip of them. If you want the full video, they will be in the description So because I don't want to take it from people. You know, I want, I want you guys to check out – if you like the video, this is um this is from Brandon Mikesell or Mike Sell. I don't know how to say his name, but this is how to stash hiking poles. So watch this video, Caleb. Simply tuck the poles in, pull your pants down over the poles. So done and done. So I'm thinking that's not good for Another hiking. Another great method, if you have an older suit, is to use suit. these bungee strappy things. Take your bungee strap. Do you see what he? Do you know what they're doing yet? Do the hand oh, yeah. loop. They're wingsuits. Around the hand yeah. Loop. Okay. That all of them, they, they sell wingsuits. So the whole video is about, like, all the different pockets of the wingsuits. So that was not really about hiking, but you recently got some trekking poles. I did. And you said those are really nice. Um, I I actually think that they're honestly, like, almost game-changing for really? me. Really? See, I just, I don't know. I like the traditional stick, but I can see where the trekking poles would but Don't be. get me wrong. I love I love having, like, a, a nice walking mm. stick. But I would use that on shorter hikes. Um, but trekking poles, to me... Are just I mean just having both of them the grip and um, the I, the rubber feet actually are really helpful. <laughs> I didn't think they were going to be. Yeah. Um, well, but it turns they act in... as brakes going oh. down. I mean, it turns uh, you into a quadruped essentially. Yeah. Or effectively, it's, so it's quite nice to have. I'll say that. Um, it takes a lot of the strain off of your lower back, mm-hmm. uh, <clears> which for me is always it, it used to always be an issue. So with this video though, you know, I, th- I thought it was hiking again, <laughs> and when he said tuck it in your tube sock, I'm like. Dude, that is going to be awful. I'm like, you're gonna, you're gonna put it around, you're gonna wear it around camp or something. I don't know. Still an interesting video. Check it out. Uh, trekking poles for, I guess, wingsuits too. Um, you gotta hike up to the <clears throat> to the spot you jump off of somehow. That's right. All right, so we've talked a lot about hiking uh, for quite a while, so it's time for our first biking part of this. So this is the biking video of the week, and this one comes from uh, Tom Riley. He's a very, he's got 16 subs. I give him a sub and comment, and he's a really nice guy. This is isolation. It's a self shot mountain biking video. Yeah, that was it. So, I know you're probably thinking, why did I choose that one? But I love just how wholesome it was. You know, because there were no frills, no crazy edits, no sick jumps. It was just it was just a guy riding his bike. And, you know, especially for more beginner people, because if you saw he hit that jump, he didn't hit that jump very high, really at all. He got, like, maybe two or three inches of air. But, I don't know, it just, it was very pure to me, and I really liked it. And I think I, that captures what mountain biking, you know, the kind of just the quietness of it very well. And I liked it. I don't know what you think. Uh, I actually, I really liked the title. uh, Just Isolation. isolation? Yeah. Uh, I think that the title itself encapsulated the video. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, It it, honestly, to to me, and I might be reading into it, I don't know. Yeah. But it seemed very artful. It was. Um, It was humble. mm -hmm. And he only has 16 subs, man. Go give that guy a subscribe. I honestly thought it was great. Yeah. Like, I I, I I really, I enjoyed that. I liked it. Mm -hmm. I liked it. So, Uh, so next is the hiking pic of the episode. Okay, so this picture comes from us too, from uh, Danica Clouton, and I freaking love this picture. Look at this. 
Wow. Isn't that sick, dude? I mean... Whoa. Hold on. Where is that? I don't know. Like... So what's, what's weird is this is like the only picture she's posted like that. Wanaka? I don't know, man. Head to the Black Hills. Yeah. See, but all of... This is the only picture she has like this on this channel. The re or on her page. The rest of her are like just book pictures. But it's beautiful, man. Like, what a good shot. It's like a sea of clouds. I'm not sure if it's from a drone or someone on this trail, but look at the trail. I want to hike. Let's go here. Let's I halfway, well, I'm halfway, i halfway wondering, though, if that's even her picture. I See, uh, I don't know either. I looked, but I reversed image searched it, and it, this was it. This is her picture. Well, all righty. Because I, I wondered the exact same thing. I'm like, yeah. did she? Do Isn't it beautiful? So we'll find out where that is, and we'll, <laughs> we'll I, figure it out. Sh uh, I think Black Hills. If, I wonder Black if I Hills? Black Hills. Well, let's look that up. Uh, and this picture... <laughs> This is a biking picture of um, it's by Cecil Two. Weather is warming up; it's time to hit the trails. Honestly, I picked this one more for the caption than the picture. I mean, it's just a good picture because, but dude, the weather. Well, it's not really warming up here, but no, it's in fact it is doing it's, the exact it's opposite outside, right yeah. now. But it is time to hit the trails, man. It is time to hit the trails. If it was warming up, uh, yeah, I'd agree. All right, now is now is the section called hot takes where. We look at a couple things, and we give our just first thoughts and hot takes, whether they're popular or not. So the first one is one that you don't know perhaps as much about, but it's single stanchion mountain bike forks. You've seen those, right? Have you ever seen those? Maybe. Wait. The one that that has, uh, basically, it's like only on one side. Yeah, it's just on one side. The other side. Yeah. And it's just, so it doesn't, doesn't have that one. Yeah. What do you think about that? That's kind of odd. It's kind of weird, right? I don't know. You know, some people swear by them, but in my opinion, I wouldn't... Well, the thing about the single stanchions is typically they don't have as much travel, so you're not going to do any hard riding. It's mainly for XC and stuff like that, you know, maybe 120, 140 mils max. So I would never ride one, but they're always a head turner, you know? Because every time I see someone with a single stanchion bike, I have to go over and be like, dude, sick bike. But, like, am I lying? Because I would, I would never own one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, well, I cool, mean, but like, I would never have one. Uh, to me, I feel like if, if you can compare that to like uh, somebody who owns a uh, a sleeper car, you know, a sleeper car. Yeah, it's a. I know what a sleeper car is. Okay, but... then yeah, yeah. It, it. I feel like it's you can compare it to that. This is my in my head, anyways. Right. Uh, you head can, can you walk over and you're like, "Yo, that's a sweet, sweet car." But, but you would personally, never... yeah. do you want to put in the work? To have that thing, yeah. Um, or actually, I guess a better example would be, um, I guess it, in the world of cars too, would be more like a like a Lamborghini or a, you know mm -hmm. an exotic or car or something like that. But but see, that's a little bit different though because. Or actually, no. Better example. Okay. Still with cars, is um, <laughs> is actually like a a big truck, like something that has absolutely terrible gas mileage. Uh. The, yeah, function, but, yeah. the function of the car or the truck is still sure. the same, but its approach to it is different. That's uh, a good analogy. Yeah, so so like it's like, yo, nice truck, but I, I mean, I would never own one. You can admire it, right. but in all reality, it's not what you want. It's not what you like. I agree, whatever. and I, I think that's a good, you know, it's just a head turner. That was our single stanchion mountain bike. Look at these shoes. These are the Teva Gateway. Um, they look like tennis shoes. But I kind of like them. They come in like blacks and greens. Gateway. I don't know, man. They're hundred. But what do you think of these? They kind of look sick, right? They look good. Yeah, like look at that. Like I, I mean, they look comfy. Oh, there's your sole. Yeah. Yeah, unless the sole has the same tech as their as their sandals do. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. I I wouldn't be about the sole. Honestly. A lightweight hiker made from modern trail. The, the gateway logo is identical. It's water resistant materials with recycled content. Slip proof durabrasion rubber sole. I don't know, man. I don't know anything about it. They have a mid too. But. I feel like Teva's uh, role in the uh, hiking world is basically like, "Hey, are you going to be hiking near water?" Pretty much. You buy a Teva. Yeah, but this is not even waterproof. It's just resistant because it looks pretty breathable. It looks really light. I don't know. I was thinking about getting them, and I guess if I get them, I'll let you know. But I mean, what's what are, what are they priced at? They're priced at a hundred. Yeah. Mm. I'm. I'm trying to justify buying these over like bare access, and I can't do it. No, that. But they might be sick. I don't know. See, and that's the thing. Like, if a shoe is under a hundred bucks and it's not sure. marketed as something specialized, uh, 
the, and like that that to me seems pretty genuine a lot sure. of times um which of course it might not be but still if it if it is then i feel like i would be more likely to get the shoe than mm. if uh say somebody was trying to market it as a specialized product and then they market um under 100 at that point right I don't know if I get them. Well, we'll we'll talk about it on here. But if not, uh, that was our hot take. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I like them. They look good. And the final one of the hot takes is with with the virus. There are so many people going outdoors now, and they're hiking, and it's crowded. Man, I feel like it's going to exacerbate problems. But but you know, what do you think about that? Like, it's great that it's getting people outside, but is it getting too many people outside? Can there be too many people outside? I don't know. <laughs> yes. This is we could talk about this for days. Yes, there can. In my opinion, I think I think right. yes. Uh, now. To say, can there be too many people outside? Technically, no. Uh, but to say, can there be too many people on the same trail or at the same campsite? Or, uh, I mean, like, where we went was the AT. You know, that was... that was That's very true. That And that, to me, is just, uh, that's a little much. Mm. Um, hiking the AT on different parts, yes. But when you're just doing an in and out on the AT, I feel like that's different. I feel like that... <laughs> People need to go to different spots. Right. Um, well, you know, they've recommended, like, not to do through hikes right now. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, you remember the thing that happened at Max Patch, right? Mm, yeah. So That was disgusting. If, for those of you who don't know, uh, Max Patch is a cool mountain. It's, it's actually on the uh, the Appalachian Trail, I'm pretty sure. It's in, uh, it's in North Carolina, and last October, I think it was... Uh, some like college people went out there and just destroyed it. They left uh, trash everywhere. You know, they were, I mean, that that really is. They just constantly kept doing it, and they have they destroyed that area. Um, and it's you know, it's unfortunate when you know it's great to get to turn people into more outdoorsy people, but when those people don't know the proper etiquette or they don't care about it, and then they end up destroying it like that. I think that's that's a bad thing. I think that there's a lot of that going around with mm -hmm. this. The, yeah, the, actually, yeah, the, you you hit, you you said something that sparked something. Um, when they don't know the proper etiquette. So right. to go back to the original question, um, is uh, or for bringing people outside, the, the virus bringing people outside, sure. that is very prevalent with the people that are doing that now. Yeah. Because there's a, not a lot of people um, who just, they want to learn about it. They just want to go out and do it mm. while they're bored. Sure. So they're not That's going true. to try to learn anything mm. about it because they're thinking, oh, well, this is just a one or two time thing. Yeah. Uh, but that could ruin it for everyone. Though. Exactly. Well, like, yeah, with Max Patch. Yeah. That did ruin it with everyone because they decided, hey, this is just a nice little place to party. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, yeah. that's it. That's and all they. they that's all they cared about. They, they didn't their see up there, anything yeah. else. Yeah. The, left talking about used toilet paper mm -hmm. everywhere. Yep. Um, Nasty. God, it, yeah, that that was honest. The well, the worst part is too is we were actually planning a trip up to Max Patch. Yeah, when that's, and we we, found we decided out about not this. to go because of that. Yeah. yeah, that was absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! But um, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I feel like this is kind of a slippery slope too because you don't you you run the risk of gatekeeping, mm -hmm. right? You're saying, oh, you can't do this because you don't know the proper way. But that's that's not what I'm saying. Like I want everyone to enjoy the outdoors and I want them to learn the proper etiquette. But at the same time. I don't want to discourage someone that doesn't know the proper etiquette from doing it. But there is a there is a point when you go from being ignorant of the proper etiquette to just straight up being destructive and just a terrible person. And exactly. I think, yeah. The, I think as long as you're not doing that, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. The um, I think too, uh, where that line is, mm. um, oddly enough, is the same thing that we get taught as a kid. Yeah. You know. Uh, True. All of the things that you're taught as a child. Um, just don't litter. You yeah, know, just uh, common sense. Leave things how you found them. Or better, if you're a Girl Scout, exactly. I think that's their motto. Yeah, yeah, leave a place go. better than you found yeah. them. Yeah, but um, I mean that that's the thing. If you just follow those normal, simple rules that you should, mm -hmm. as a no problems, basic yeah. human being. Uh, just mm -hmm. in my opinion here. No, I agree. Um, it's a hot take, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, if you if you just follow those just normal, basic rules. You should be fine in nature. I mean, I agree. if you don't litter, you're not going to leave crap behind. True. That alone could so have, have, well, not solved, but at least dampened the majority mm. of what was uh, a big deal, uh, one of the yeah. big deals, anyway, about Max Patch. Uh, the other is large gatherings like that, um, 
well for and this is this is where it gets with the virus. The, yeah, but this is where it gets down to the point where people might not know. Um, this one can be chalked up to uh, ignorance, mm. and it's uh, so like mass, ma- another thing that happens with that mass patch. I'm assuming here is if there was a whole bunch of people there, like a lot, too sure. many for the grounds, which there were. Yes, by far. campsites. Every place has a limit and for a reason. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, and uh, I can tell. I can say actually, just from our Montana trip, sure, uh, and seeing the varied um, places that we were, mm-hmm. the size restriction mattered. So, Absolutely. For example, Absolutely. the uh, when I can't remember where it was that we that we stayed here. It was the one that was looked like it was cut out of like really tall grass, and it had just enough room for the truck, a tent, and it had the table. You remember? Um, I can't remember what what would happen there. It was. It was a. It was cut out of grass. It was the I think it was the second or third one that we stopped at on the way up there. Yeah, that was in uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that one though. Mm-hmm. So a yeah, size restriction for that, right? Mm. Uh, they have these spots cut out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but technically, if you wanted to, you could make your own spot. True. Uh, by just driving over it and. Setting up camp, right? But um, you have to reserve a campsite at those places, though, like that uh, place, exactly, or at least pay for one, not necessarily reserve. But. Also true, but that—that's what—that's—that's kind of what I'm saying, you know, mm. is they have that certain amount set because they don't want to damage the actual surrounding environment right. too much. No, um, yeah, because if you get to that point where there's it's just cleared out so you can make room for all these campers. You've already destroyed the place that they came to camp for. Right. Um, but I, I, that's that's my opinion. That's your hot take, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, kind of in a nutshell is, yeah. is basically um, people need to have basic human de- decency. Yep. And then also remember that if they are not uh, a frequent outdoorsman or at least were raised knowing sure. it, that. Ignorance is a big deal. Not, mm-hmm. it's not just small. And ignorance is, it might be bliss for you, right? But for others, you're ruining something that could be beautiful. Absolutely. So that's that's yep. that's what I have to say. And I'll, I'll just close with this. You know, I don't want. If you want to go outside, definitely go outside. But if you see a crazy amount of people, first of all, if you can't social distance there, you probably shouldn't be there anyway right now. Smart. Um, but two, you know. Outdoorsmen and and especially mountain bikers and outdoorsmen, they are some of the friendliest people I have ever met. So you know, if you don't know something, just ask. Be like, you know, hey, what do I, you know, just anything. You know, what's the etiquette for this? Where are the trails? Stay on the trails. Follow the signs. Don't litter. Common sense. Really not hard. Uh, now that's not just you know, not trying to say everyone should just with no research just try to do like a week hike or something <laughs> like that. Don't do that. But you know. I mean, definitely do your research for that, but it's not hard. You know, I, I think everyone should enjoy the outdoors, but just do it responsibly and like a like a decent human being, like yeah. you were saying. So, All right, that's going to do it for hot takes. Going on to the next segment, I can't remember what it is, so let me look up. <laughs> <laughs> nice, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next is the destination sections. We've got two destinations, one for hiking and one for biking. The hiking destination for this one is Mount Camerer. Have you ever heard of Mount Camerer? No. Let me <laughs> show you. A picture. It's uh, in the Smoky Mountain National Park, which we have not spent much time in there at all for some reason. I mean, it's really, it's our closest one. Dude. And I've been looking at some stuff outside of Mount Cameron. There's some amazing, like, just stuff to do there. So definitely going to try to spend some more time up there. Um, but Mount Cameron is, um, I think it's like 10 miles, something like that. You know, it's like an overnight hike. Um, you know, you go in, it's out and back. You go in, well, you can keep going if you want. Um, but there's a stone uh, fire tower at the very end of it on this ridge and it was built by the local stones there and that was it was actually used and it's a very unique it's hexagonal fire tower and you can actually camp in there you know I've seen some people on Instagram do it um, and we're going it's yeah it's happening you in 100% okay now our biking destination for the episode is the Kentucky Mega Cavern dude it's cold <laughs> outside it's snowing right now I want to ride my bike I don't have a fat bike so what do you do you know if well, well, I guess you just not do anything. But if you really wanted to ride, <laughs> you go to the Kentucky Maggie Cavern, dude. Um, we've been talking about going there for years. Um, since since you started mountain biking, actually. Yeah. Like, uh, when you still were on your Walmart bike, you were thinking about it. <laughs> Was that on the Walmart <laughs> bike? Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
Um, all right. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, the Kentucky Mountain Cavern is actually a giant cave cavern thing in Kentucky near Louisville. Is it called the Louisville Mega Cavern or the Kentucky Mega Cavern? It's one of those. Anyway, um, it's like a balmy 60, 70 degrees all year long. You get to ride around there. They have a, they have zip lines, I think. They have like uh, some really cool tours, but they do have a full free ride course inside there. Uh, and we're going to go hopefully soon. And if we do, there will be a video on it, but y'all should check that out. Didn't we drive near it? Uh, we saw a know. sign on the way up there. I think I we might like have. We, we saw one for Bat Cave. Or, uh, <laughs> Bat Cave? It, no, that, sorry. Bat Cave is in North Carolina. Uh, the Mammoth Caves. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay, so next is our gear segment. So we got hiking gear and biking gear. The hiking gear, I'm going to turn it over to Caleb because, uh, well, actually, I don't know what you chose. So this is for you. You talk, While you talk about it, I'm going to pull up the questions for the next Cool. Segment, so. so today's sponsor is <laughs> we are uh, not sponsored. NipGuard. NipGuard. Yeah, NipGuard. NipGuard. So- <laughs> <laughs> uh, as much as uh, this sounds like a joke, this is actually one of the things I brought to uh, to talk about. Not even joking. Oh, you're fine, dude. Uh, so, we actually ran a 5K this morning, <laughs> and um, yeah. I have always had an issue uh, with, well, nip chafing. Uh, <laughs> and oddly enough, this is actually a, uh, like, I got these from a running store, uh, but while you're hiking, uh, one thing that I've, I've uh, noticed is if my pack is not situated properly, then tends to rub in a sensitive area. So having these on you is actually quite nice. And uh I mean and you can they come in like little segments and stuff. So you can bring this one strip right here uh and it weighs literally nothing. So if you're work if you're worried about weight or anything um you don't have to with these. Uh so you can bring them just in case or you can put them on right before you go. And uh, wear them that way. That personally, I, I'm actually going to be starting to wear uh, to wear these to pretty much um, at all of our hiking destinations uh, and a lot of the activities, just in case. Uh, but for you, uh, for you guys out there, uh, it's quite helpful. But um, but yeah, I just uh, I figured I should share this as the very first perfect uh, <laughs> as the it's very first product. Um, but yeah, so. That is that is one thing, but the next things uh, that I wanted to show is actually. Hey, you're doing more than one. It was supposed I've, to be one I've, each. I've All right, got, let's go. I've got three things. Well, hurry it up. I I will be quick with both of these. We will see. I I promise. All right. At least this one. Okay. This one is this one is just Moabs. a rant. <sighs> these are not Moabs. They're not Moabs. I wish they were Moabs no, because they actually still make Moabs. Oh, uh, but go. yeah, that leads perfectly into what I wanted to talk about, which is Merrill. Why? Why did you stop making Capras? <laughs> I do like the Capras. <laughs> so the Capras actually were one of my favorite boots I've ever bought before. Um, they look slick. Oh, they, they are not slick. They no, are like, like slick as in cool. I know, but I had to take it literally. Oh, okay. I thought you just missed because they're me. so <laughs> grippy. Uh, but <laughs> yikes. Um, this is actually uh, that is the one thing that I liked about them the most is the sole itself. Um, it's got this vibram, dude. thing is stupid grippy. Yeah, it uses Vibram Mega Grip technology. Can't go wrong. Um, with that. Oh, dude, I love them. But the thing is, with this particular shoe, they also in the tread design uh, used, uh, which by the way, I, I have to say, Merrill does still use the tread design. Um, or at least aspects of the same tread design, but this entire shoe is designed uh, to mimic the uh, actual foot, uh, so the hoof of a oh. Capra Mountain Goat. Oh, okay. Uh, which I mean, a Capra Mountain Goat, you're not gonna like. They 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 are able to get to places that they should not be able to get to. I want a boot that has the same technology, the same type of a sole. Oh. Um, but uh, a little bit wider in the toe box. These are boots that I'm able to stand on a rock face like this, and they stay. I I, I'm, I don't budge. Like, it, it's, it, it grips rock so well, uh, which is when we go hiking and stuff, uh, just along the AT, or um, we went to... I'm trying to think of this, spa- this place specifically. You're Mount Yona, wasn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, it was. Yona Mountain? The rock garden at, at, Mount, Yona. Uh, at mm-hmm. Mount Yona. So, 
the going on the rock gardens oh dude these are my favorite shoes and uh, sorry a little bit of a rant um not I, I ended up just talking about the shoe but yeah, these are definitely my favorite boots i've ever owned in my life and rest uh, in peace i i can still kind of wear them but I, they do cramp my toes a little bit um but yeah uh fantastic shoes pour Gore-Tex one out for the cappers where's that nasty coffee i'll definitely pour that out oh yeah it's actually all over the table so uh yeah you already um, did technically you, I did. you ruined the wood i know <laughs> But today's actual tech is these boys right here. For the record, I told him to bring one thing, and he's got, he's got three now. So yeah. <laughs> It's true. I should probably just not do these. I didn't look up enough. Yours or mine? One of them is called Phaser Bound. The other one is called Something Else Bound. Uh, one's a newer model than the other. All right, so Caleb didn't do enough research on his show and tell. I just can't remember the <laughs> name. Show. I can tell you other parts of it and the, the why they're great and awesome, um, but... I'll just uh, I'll save that what, for the next one. We'll bring it back next one. We'll compare yeah. those boots to my boots. So. That would be great, actually. Be, be I'll good. actually know which ones are, are uh, the right ones. But All right. Actually, that helps cuts down on time. It does. Boom. So on to the biking gear. We're sticking with the shoe theme today. Nice. 510 free rides. You can't go wrong with the 510 free rides. You know, a lot of people, especially I me, mean, I did this when I first started riding. Uh, you ride in tennis shoes. Don't ride in tennis shoes. Then I meant move to skate shoes because skate shoes, if you can't afford these, these are a cheap. Those are a cheap alternative. But, dude, having a proper shoe that grips the pedals is it changed your life, man. Because well, it changed your riding career, I guess. Um, you know, because I got these about the time I was trying to learn how to bunny hop and to, to do tricks and stuff, dude. It it makes you almost feel like the bike is an extension of your feet. Um, you know, they don't move, especially if you're riding flats. You know, if you're riding clips, then that's not much of an issue. But dude, if you're riding flats and you got to get you a pair of these 510s, man. Free rides or whatever, just the little little circle waffle thing. It's not waffle, waffles, vans, but it's got the circles on there. It just grips those. It's so soft, um, and they're just a durable shoe. They're, they're water-resistant. You know, they're not going to tear up. Um, I don't recommend hiking in them, though. They are <laughs> they are very heavy. They are meant. These are meant to make your foot essentially stick to the pedal and be the pedal. It turns your flats into the same shape and contour of your pedals. <laughs> Something to add, actually, really quick, uh, talking about hiking in them. I, I have watched this man hike in these before. I've not and hiked in those. Not when? not hiking oh, like that. Yeah, you I've had, walked. Yeah, you true. had to walk That's in true. them, and it was yeah, it was terrible. It was in the dark, and we couldn't oh, really gosh, ride because we forgot lights. Uh, that was awful. So <laughs> he was. He was just, you could hear him slapping, clunk, 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 slapping clunk, clunk, through clunk. the woods, yeah. man. Oh, it was hilarious. Now, again, you can walk in them, <laughs> and they're probably better than a dress shoe, but. It, it's they, they are they, not meant for hiking. They, they are, are meant they for are one meant thing, for, and that is yeah. meant to grip pedals and, and make your, turn your pedal contour into the same contour as your foot. I, I can say, too, uh, just from watching him use them, it uh, you can tell the oh, difference. Oh, fantastic. You can definitely tell. In yeah. fact. You can see where you're starting to wear. Oh yeah, but that's that's really nice though. You can actually tell the rubber is fantastic quality. Oh yeah, just by feeling oh, the absolutely. bottom where actually where it's worn. Uh, that like that's really strong. Yeah, it's super. That is very man. very good. Why are they called five tens? Because they get five stars and ten out of ten. <laughs> That's not why they're called that, but that's that's what I'm saying. So done. Okay, uh, on to our next section, uh, and this is going to be just answering questions that people have on the internet um, from comments and whatever. Um, however, this episode, this is the first episode, um, and potentially more episodes. We're gonna be, we're going to Yahoo <laughs> Answers. Uh, so there's our half hiking and half biking questions. Are you ready for this one? First oh, yeah. question: How dangerous is mountain biking? From anonymous. Uh, it depends. Okay. Scale of one. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> okay. 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 Sure. Okay, okay. 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 No, a mountain biking. You know, as long <laughs> as you're not going outside your. Well, you should definitely go outside your comfort zone, but don't do something that makes you nervous and you're calm about it. It's pretty safe. Uh, okay. Um, it. It. But it really does depend. You know, if you're just doing easy XC, you're not going to get hurt. But if you're doing some of the stuff that I do sometimes. Yeah. If we had more footage, that would be a video. But yeah. Uh, yeah. What was it called? Uh, the obstacles. What do you call the obstacles? Uh, features. Yeah, features. features. So, um, it's like obstacles. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. So, one thing I would have to add on this, just little little sure. thing, is uh, don't do features if you don't know how to ride. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you got to work your way up to it. You know, that's that's the thing about any th- any new sport is start small, build your confidence, and go over time. Because if you don't, you're gonna get hurt. I, I just th- I just well, thank you. It, we've got stories, but I, I'll save those. That's for later. true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Um, next question: Do you like hiking by anonymous? Yes. No. Yes, I do. Mm-mm, hate it. Next question: Do you <laughs> can you ride a mountain bike in the snow and is it safe? Yes, you can. 
Uh, fat bikes are much better for that, though. Uh, I've seen. I have not. Well, <laughs> we should. We should cut right here to you going out there and riding the freaking snow right now. Oh, I'm not doing that right now. It's dark, dude. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can definitely do it. That's what fat, fat bikes are kind of made for is uh, thick mud, thick snow. Um, some people can do it in not fat bikes, but, you know, we live in the south, so we don't get that much snow. Um, Except for today. That's true. So I've never done it, but I know it can be done, and I'd love to try it. You know, we should get a, We should try it. We should try, try fat bikes. You know what else you can ride in the snow? What's that? Uh, a snowboard. Yeah, which mm-hmm. we'll be doing soon. Yep, yep. And also, uh, uh, as you see on my channel, a skateboard, <laughs> kind of. Uh, okay. <laughs> This is by Kevin T. Uh, Good first time backpacking trips in the Bay Area. My girlfriend and I decided it would be fun to try out some backpacking. I was wondering what are the best places to go around San Jose. Also being our first time, I think the trip should probably be one or two nights at the most. The only place I know of that has backpacking is Castle Rock SP uh, State Park. Uh, Is that a good place for beginners? What should I know before I get myself into this? Thanks. Well, I don't know the first thing about California, uh, hiking-wise. But I do know... state. Um... And it has land. True. I do know that definitely one night, uh, if you're going backpacking, well, if this is backpacking, one night is the best place. Start with a short trail. Don't overextend yourself, you know. Uh, I'd probably go eight miles for your very first time. That's four in, four out. Um, I wouldn't even do that uh, unless he's done research about it. What, do you want to do two in? That's like, no. No, because here's the thing. I would do. F- I would take a whole day to do four, start in the morning, because that way... You- you know, because if you only have two hours, I don't know, you'll you'll have to learn time management. If you're just starting, take, uh, you know, four to five in, four to five out. Start in the morning, budget your time, and you'll learn what your abilities are, and you'll get there. Um, what should you know before you're getting yourself into it? Research, 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 and prepare. Um, you prepare, know, I think, is the biggest out of all of those. Exactly, but you've got to research to know what to prepare with. You know, true. Research what do you need to put in your pack? How much weight? You need a tent. You know, at the very water. definitely water, or, water and a water filtration system. A water filtration system is better uh, because you can you don't have to carry it. You know, unless of course you're hiking in an area with no water. Uh, yeah, but natural def- water around. I don't recommend doing that for your first time. Um, so you know, look. I mean, of course, there's the ten essentials. I'll link to an REI video that talks about it. Um, the ten essential hike uh, things for hiking. It's not hard. It's really not hard. You just got to know what you're talking about or what you're doing. So uh, definitely, there you go, Kevin. Uh, you asked this one decade ago, so it's definitely <laughs> relevant. <laughs> That's what it says, one decade ago. Wow. <laughs> All right. I know he's just, he's waiting on the edge of his seat with bated breath for that answer. So you can try hiking now, Kevin. Thanks for the question. <laughs> okay, here's a more relevant one. Five days ago. Uh, realistically, how long would it take to bike across the United States slash best bike route? Uh, a long time. Next one. Good. How does <laughs> what does hiking involve? Okay, so this may sound like a dumb question, but I'm serious. If it is just walking through trails and admire nature, or does it involve actual exercise? How would I? Oh my goodness, that was formatted weird. How would I find out find out about hiking options in my area? And as you can tell, I'm pretty new to all this, so any advice slash help is greatly appreciated. Um, it involves more than appreciating nature and stuff, although that is my favorite part. It. I enjoy disc oh, golf and golf for the same reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love golf just for being outside. Yeah, I mean, I, oh, I like playing golf too. Oh yeah, I, I like the too. game, but um, sure. but at the same time, like even if I was not playing, I would mm. enjoy just sitting and watching. Yeah, um, I don't like watching golf on TV because no, I do. you're not there. I'd, I'd watch it on TV, but <laughs> yeah, this is not golfing. This is hiking and biking. Not I'm, hiking, I'm, biking, I'm, and golfing. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm just saying no, you're for fine. the same reasons. I, like just being in nature in general, absolutely is uh, is fantastic. Um, but it's actually it's actually absolutely exercise. Um, and especially some of the steeper, more strenuous ones. And you can look at All Trails is a great app. Definitely get All Trails, and that's for mountain biking and for hiking. Um, I definitely, but for for biking, uh, I recommend Single Tracks. Uh, you can use them in tandem, but Single Tracks has specific stuff like you know uh, where the entrances are and stuff like that. But All Trails is a good place to start. It talks about how strenuous it is. Um, there is absolutely some exercise in hiking. You can get fit doing it because some of the stuff is that's really steep. Some of you got to crawl up, man. Uh, and those stairs will kick your tail. <laughs> so I, I had a flashback to the last time we went on the uh, Waterfall Wonder. Uh, last time I went on there. Uh, yeah, that was the last one. No, no, there's, I'm sorry. You the, the one with uh, the one with Maria. Did you post, yeah, did you post that one yet? It'll be posted before this podcast. Okay, good. Or podcast, um, whatever this is. Yeah, the uh, yeah the so the last Waterfall Wonder where that I went on was we actually that was Ravencliff, right? Yeah, we crawled up to that. We crawled up to that. 
Wow, oh, that dude. is a big difference. That's a huge difference, uh, yeah. But, yeah, no, we crawled up to mm. that last waterfall, and, it, dude, it was... That was tough. Oh, it was so worth it, It was really though. tough. Oh, yeah, absolutely was. Um, you know, and, and that also makes the nature that much better, you know? And, and if you're going hike, backpacking on top of hiking, there's not just the hike, there's also the camping and the, you know, just... Just roughing it. That's, that's how, it's just roughing it. That's yep. what it is. It's uh, pretty views and uh, pretty hard work sometimes. But, you know, yeah. So, And this one was also asked a decade ago. So oh, my god! <laughs> definitely got the most relevant questions here. Yeah, today. man. Okay. Um, and now we're on our very final segment here. We have a national park for the episode, uh, one featured. And this one, we got to start with the basics. This one is one of my favorite national parks and one that we've both been to. Where is it up here? Uh, Glacier National Park. Waterton Glacier hey. National Park. Absolutely stunning national park. And as with most national parks, you got to get out of the car to see them. We, our last one, we got out, we only got to do one hike. But, you know, it's beautiful from the car, but you got to get out to see them. Glacier is some of the most breathtaking mountains of any mountain or of any national park that I've been to. You know, I've, uh, I haven't been to Zion or um, Yosemite, or as uh, our, our ex president would say, Yosemite. <laughs> um, <laughs> rest in peace. Yosemite Sam. <laughs> uh, no, but I'd love to go to both of those. Uh, but Glacier is amazing. You know, it's got everything. It's got wildlife. It's got, well, glaciers. It's got mountains. It's got forests. It's got waterfalls, lakes. Uh, it's got ice cream, dude. It's got those cool campsites. You know, mm-hmm. you can you can glamp a little bit. You can go for more civilized. Or you can rough it and go to, like, uh, the primitive stuff. Uh, yeah. What's the, what's the, uh, um, <laughs> Pole Bridge. You can go to Pole Bridge. You can, uh, you can go to the campsite that we went to, man. That was... <laughs> <laughs> that was a good campsite. Yeah, you can go to there. For those who don't know, it was a field. It was a field. Yeah, it was a field with a fire. Oh, we need, we just had a circle in the dirt. We didn't have a fire pit. Yeah. Uh, you it can was... yeah you can check out our our glacier video on that one. Yeah. But... If I had to describe Glacier National Park in one word, though, uh, breathtaking. Dude, that's exactly what I was gonna yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say Keanu Reeves. You know, is you're breathtaking. Yeah. Or that one. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I would say. One hundred percent about glaciers. So. But yeah, that's going to do it for our first episode of Hiking and Biking. Thank you guys for tuning in. It'll um, The show will change and evolve as it goes. Um, you know, I don't know if this is going to be on as a podcast as well, so there'll be an audio and a video version. So uh, I definitely recommend watching the video version because, well, we're doing it visually. We have the, the stuff. But uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to te- check out the other videos on the channel. Uh, subscribe, like, because uh, there's more com- content coming. I've got a full-time job now. I'm done with school. No more homework. So that means more consistent schedule, more consistent videos, maybe (laughs) (laughs) so yeah thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next time see you should we we have five yeah